uh, frozen in this moment, the last, and I know it. Think about the winners with hands with the coldest. Think about hand out, so you're still growing. Think about the world that we didn't even notice. We- hey guys, how are you? Welcome. It's uh, another live podcast on Facebook. And of course, you can check us on our uh, YouTube station as well. We've got that up and running. We're very slow at posting videos. I'm so sorry, but we're getting better at it every day as best we can. Uh, I have a great local absolute legend. His family come from all the way back in the day in Bantry. Pure, pure talent is all I can say. This guy, some of his photos are just absolutely amazing. We're going to get into him. His name is Nicholas O'Donnell. So he's, you know, him. you know, his parents, you know, his grandparents. They are absolute legends in, in, in the town. Uh, we got to say a big shout out to everybody who's hitting us up. Hello. Welcome. How are you? If you're first time watching, stay tuned. You have basically an idiot in front of you on the camera talking to someone with a lot more sense. So we're going to have a bit of fun. We're going to have a bit of crack. It's all lighthearted. Uh, we got to say a big shout out to all our sponsors as well. We got to say Kelly and Co. in Bantry. Head over there. They'll give you 10% off. Maritime are doing discounts on their uh, desserts from their bar menu. You've got to go to Simply Suits. They're doing discounts as well. Uh, head over to the brick oven. They're giving you free food if you mention cabin fever. And don't forget, check out the new reliever Furbish Centra in Bantry. They're doing new stuff with their, uh, brand new Cahans chipper. It's a traditional chipper. It's brand new to the town. So go check them out. They're also doing stuff with, uh, with us. So cabin fever, head there. You'll get a free soft drink. Um, so that's it. I'm giving you away free stuff, giving you free discounts. Uh, I'm trying to help you out as best I can. So, as I help you, you help me. Let's spread this network going. Um, it's all about getting local people out there and doing the best we can. So we're full of amazing people in Bantry. So we're going to try and spread the word of how cool Bantry is. And we're going to get straight into this now. So hang on a second. If I press this button, we're going to be joined by, like I said, an absolute legend. Uh, little, little do. Here we go. Nicholas, how are you? my Darren, friend? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good thing. I am very good. I'm very good. How's life? Life is good. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm not a bother, man. Like I said, we're trying to get everybody out there. We're trying to do the best we can with what we have. And I'm just an idiot trying to make sure everyone else's story goes. <laughs> because my story is useless. I've seen worse, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Come here to me. How the COVID treated you? How, how are things going? COVID has been interesting. In a way, like, I suppose a lot of people have been kind of complaining about how, like, obviously businesses have gone, of, gone out of business and there's kind of a lot of people suffering from it. But there's a good side because it was a big, long break mm-hmm. and it was great to kind of catch up on backlog of work. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to have and then obviously catch up with family. Like, so I'm based up in Bray for the year, but then I moved home before COVID. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of nice to spend a few months with the family. Yeah, back home in Bantry. Yeah, the hospital, a lot of walks. The, the metropolis that is <laughs> <laughs> So you move, right? We got to we got to go all the way very back to the very beginning of this story. How did you get into? Now I must shout out his Instagram, ladies and gentlemen. Check him out, Nicholas Ado- Nicholas <laughs> O'Donnell Photography. The stuff, man. I don't know how. I genuinely. I remember when you were taking pictures just for calendars, and then the next thing I see it, you're rubbing shoulders with like Little Mix, the Coronas, Lewis Capaldi. You know, you're on stage with like Wild Youth and all them lads. Like that's a big step up from a small town in Bantry. How did it all begin? Tell everybody your story. Um, okay, so I suppose I started when I was 14. So I suppose I started taking pictures on kind of a family road trip with a friend's family. And then from that, the kind of love for it kind of grew more and more each day. So I started off doing landscape and it was purely landscape. And I remember at the beginning, I was like, I'm not going to photograph anyone. I don't like it. And then I moved into kind of local newspaper work for the Southern Star and then eventually the Irish Examiner. And from that, then kind of moved on to journalistic work, photojournalistic work. Um, I've done weddings, I've done nightclub photography, and then I went to college about two, three years ago and discovered the music scene. And then since then, I haven't looked back. And it's, yeah, like I said, I've seen you do, I've seen you come up along, like, like I said, starting all them ways back doing the calendars for Christmas time locally. Um, and then, like I said, you're, you're, you're running it with Little Mix and the Coronas and Lewis Capaldi. You've, you photog- you, you've photographed, you've taken pictures of Lewis Capaldi a couple of times, haven't you? Yeah, so the first time I photographed him was at um Independence Festival down in Mitchellstown. So I was I was photograph I was shooting for the festival. So I remember um Glenn, a friend of mine, told me that uh, Lewis was backstage and the one kind of goal of the festival was to fo- get a portrait of Lewis. So I legged it backstage, introduced myself to the whole team and then introduced myself to Lewis and then I was like, Could I pull you aside for a minute or two? Pulled him aside and then got the portraits. 
and then fast forward to the start of this year i photographed lewis at the three arena for golden Plec, which is kind of an online publication and that was the last gig before the virus kicked off that was the last hurrah that's not a bad way to finish things is it really not too bad i love confetti this is great <laughs> I wonder will we get them scenes again. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Oh, like, man. The music industry is, is, is taking a beating right now. Huge beating. And the government's, like, a lot of the ways the government's ignoring it. Mm-hmm. Like, they're letting pubs open. They're letting schools open. They're letting businesses open. But they're kind of ignoring the music industry, which brings in a couple of billion each year. I so it's a big you, loss. I'm on the other side of it. As yeah, well. you're probably affected as well. Yeah, 100%. Your weddings, like, it's it's... Like wedding is my business, and that you're you're not going to yeah. get the, the big ring around at the end of no. the night anymore, or else everyone's going to have to stay two meters apart. It's not really, yeah, it's not really an Irish traditional <laughs> wedding unless you have people. No, yeah, you know, it'd be a lot different, a lot tamer. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, like, man, I gotta say, your your work is so, and the only way of describing this work, it is so rock and roll, man, and it really is. <laughs> it's it's like it's like the Sex Pistols meets the 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 Rolling Stones. Like it's I like that. So it is cool, man. It really is. And like I'm a big fan of your work because thank you. It's so natural. It's so raw. It's you know you have. I don't know how people do it, man. Because I can't even take a selfie. Never mind take a picture of that <laughs> and, and confetti. It's just practice, turns. <laughs> take a lot of bad selfies. You'll get a good selfie. I got a big forehead, man. I got a big <laughs> first. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I can't, I can't understand. Who, yeah, like the stuff you get, man. You got lads jumping in the air. You've got guitar solos, man. Your stuff is so, so cool, and it's so like the lighting is part. Like I don't know. I genuinely don't know how you do it, man. Because like I've seen a couple of your Instagram posts, and you've got guys like the sweats rolling out of them, and they're there doing the air guitar <laughs> and everything, and it's. Like, you, like, how do you manage to get it? Do you just take, like, loads and loads of pictures all the time, or are you just hoping to So I suppose what the gig is, you kind of, yeah, I suppose you take a lot of shots. So you kind of take them in bursts of three or four. So say you're kind of looking around the stage, you kind of see something happening. So maybe wait a few seconds for it to happen, or else I just kind of go in and pounce. So then I take multiple shots. And then from one of those shots, I'd hope to kind of get one decent shot, or kind of a, what's the word, like kind of a gif of shots. If that makes sense. Yeah, a gathering, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's it. You just pick it from there. So it's, it's really simple. Like, I definitely could do it. Easy, man. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, man. Like, and, like I, I genuinely, man, I'm in awe of your work because it, it's so, so cool the way you do it. And all your photos of, of the bands and stuff like that, it's none of it seems forced. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing worse than having the, the family portrait type picture with bands you know what i mean like you've got lads trying to like break guitars and stuff like that like it's really really cool man you give it you give a very natural um appearance to rock and roll you know yeah i suppose but like i suppose the way i work it is i can fly in the wall so say if i was working with a band for all access i'll be backstage on stage in the pit in the crowd so i suppose for backstage you kind of act as fly in the wall and you kind of act if you're not there but you kind of take shots and you let people chat away you don't really interfere with them. But then obviously you'd like to get maybe one or two pose shots. So you maybe try and get that before or after the gig. And then with the gig is you're just kind of, yeah, pinpointing things happening and taking shots. And yeah, just let the lads on stage do their job. And do you pre-know what's happening on stage? Like, do you know when the the fireworks are going to go off? Or do you know when the confetti cannon is going to explode out on the stage? Or do you get any heads up at all? Or it's literally, oh God, must snap, 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 snap. Quick, 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 quick. Um, I suppose for most kind of gigs, like big gigs now, say Lewis Capaldi, for instance, back in the three arena. Mm -hmm. So we had a cannon of confetti going off the start. So security told us to wait for that to go off and then go in. So we wouldn't injure ourselves. And then I suppose with the likes of, say, Coronas, um, they give us the set list before the gig and then it shows which song CO2 will go off or confetti will go off so you can kind of plan your you plan which shots to get for each song so you can if that makes sense where you can be in the crowd or on the stage yeah or... exactly so you kind of pre-plan to get where you want to be and then if you're doing multiple shows on a tour for instance you can kind of choose a different location for each particular shot you have to get to kind of mix it up a bit yeah, I get you. So you can yeah. you, you get to learn their set list and you kind of know 
what's happening and, and where you do and you kind of yeah exactly so you've worked with some of the top names you're going to have to give us a shout out with some of the names you've done like I um, go I suppose on. straight off the bow the, the Cronas one of my main bands um, World Juve mm-hmm. Declan McKenna so I went on tour with them last year across UK um, and then obviously kind of bigger names such as Billy Eilish the EP Florence the Machine and then smaller kind of local acts like Love Buzz Mm-hmm. and then the Clockworks which are based over in London now they actually got signed to Alan McGee so okay. he was the ex-Oasis manager mm-hmm. so he signed them to his new label so yeah I kind of work with a lot of different bands so it's cool and that's cool you're not you're not tied down with any one in particular band or anything like that there'd be nothing worse than just being with the same band for like so so long because you can bring fresh things all the time if you're working with different people I suppose uh, in one sense it's great to kind of work with a band for such a long time because you kind of the more you the more you work with them, the more friendly they become. Like, for instance, new, uh, there's a pop band called New Rules. Mm-hmm. So they're based over in London. So I flew out to theirs for about two weeks. So I was living with them and kind of uh, getting images of their, kind of what they do each day, kind of video work as well. So that was cool. So it's like Safari. You'd be following packs of people around the place and just... Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and see what happens. <laughs> That's cool, man. Like, I... like. Like I said, there's nothing worse than the the family portrait type pictures where everything is just so posed, like you know, the ah. hand is on the hip or the the hair is flicked back or catch me. No, this candid, candid is the best way. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. That's it. So you're all you're you're just gonna do music now for the time being. You're gonna go away from the the wedding side of it, and you're gonna go away from the uh, the landscape side of it, and you're just gonna stick in the music industry for a while. You think? Uh, well, I suppose my main kind of genre of ph- photography would be music, but obviously if I was offered a wedding, I'd do it. And then, say, if someone wanted me to get a, a landscape shot for them, I'd do it as well. So you don't discriminate? But then, you take money no, money. no discrimination. No discrimination. <laughs> and then, obviously, um, I'm getting into skate photography now, which is cool. Which is, what's that now? Skate photography, like skateboarding? People oh, skateboarding? skateboarding. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. <laughs> abstract art type thing see like i said you're with an idiot here like so <laughs> don't worry too much about it so that that's pretty cool because you get the skateboards and lads really balancing is it their life dependent yeah it's, Sometimes it's it does. mad sport well, i think one of the hardest sports out there like i tried it for a while and nearly broke my leg so no that's me done for a while <laughs> You get some cool shots though, man. If you, you get some oh, definitely. Cool skateboarders, that it is nuts. Like, you know, the way to see what they can do with just a, a piece of wood and for it. Oh, it's crazy. 20 sets and all. It's mad. Yeah, it is cool. And like you said, it's all real natural and stuff like that. So, what's life on the road? Is it like limousines and, you know, TVs going out windows <laughs> and stuff like that? Is it, is it the highlight? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it's all that glamorous. Like, it's great because you're on the road, you get to meet a lot of different people. You're, you're traveling somewhere every day. Like a lot of the times, I'd be in a van, mm. and then there was the one time where I was in a tour bus. So that was cool. That so was I had my own bed, and yeah, it was great. So yeah, mostly living rough and eating poorly, and yeah, just living rough and dirty. A paid homeless man. That's what normally people say when they're on the road. Exactly. And so <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> So who are the big acts now you want to be working for? Like if you had a magic wand, who who would you be looking to, to work with? Oh, there's a lot of bands. Uh, I suppose there's a, starting off with the Idols. They're kind of a punk band. Mm-hmm. They're based in London. It took them maybe 12 years to kind of break it mm-hmm. with their latest album. And then Declan McKenna, I'd like to do some more, more work with him. Mm-hmm. And then obviously kind of keep the same bands, but obviously maybe bigger bands like <sighs> I think Monkeys would be a dream. That'd be really cool. That would be a cool one. Their, their yeah. shows are nuts. Like, oh, I'll be mental. Even Liam and No. Yeah, that would be dope, wouldn't it? Imagine, just talk to them, supposedly. A hundred million each to come back. <sighs> Jeez, they've been saying that for a long time. Yeah. yeah. I okay. feel like Liam is more inclined to go for it, but Noel is kind of stuck up his own hole a bit. <laughs> and oh, it kind of shows. <laughs> be like, you know what I mean? Ah, they'll be rich. They, they really will never have to work again if, if they, no. they could sell out tomorrow like it'd be gone <sighs> within seconds they'll be playing stadiums all over the place yeah well it's that's like not the, allowed yeah. anymore that's it give it a few years give hopefully few years. and they'd be like the Rolling Stones the Wrinkly Rockers oh I'd be mad <laughs> 
<laughs> but I definitely think if it, it, regardless of how much I hated or loved my brother, if someone gave me a hundred million, I'd do a lot for him. Oh, I do a lot for it. I would, I would do a I, serious yeah. lot. And imagine, imagine them doing taking photos of like "Don't Look Back in Anger" or any of them. Oh, it's I mean? the dream. It'd be unbelievable. Like the people would be bananas for it. Like especially coming back after COVID. Yeah. Because like the first few gigs back now are going to be absolutely mental. The crowds are going to be something else. Do you see this new? Um, have you seen it in England? They tried to do this social distancing concert where they had everybody up on like uh, scaffolding. I saw that they did it with um, Sam Fender and Tom Greenan. Mm. But I know one of the concerts were cancelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they they couldn't they couldn't guarantee people's safety upon or getting to the entrance. While they were inside there, they couldn't they couldn't do it. And that was because people were queuing up too early because they thought that they'd be able to get to a pod, we'll call it, quicker than most. Um, so that's what I heard along, along the grapevine, why things were cancelled and stuff like that. Okay. They, they were trying to do it. It makes kind of sense, because like if you thought you were having to fight for your pod, you would kind of push up front like everybody tries to get to True. the front of the stage. You know? Oh, completely. But um, like you know Ireland was supposed to do some of those gigs? Mm. So a lot of them got cancelled. And then there's this kind of artist called Bingo Loco. Yep. And he went ahead and there was people walking all over the place. They were drinking. It's just, it's just unfair. And like artists like Gavin James, Hermes yeah. Green, all them, because they put so much work into it. Their crew is losing out on so much money and then it gets canceled. It's rubbing the face. It is. It is, you know, and like these, uh, regardless of the big multinational, well, I don't say multinational, but the, the big, big bands, like, you know, likes of Gavin James, which is sort of a uh, homegrown, uh, did it from the bottom. Now he's here. Do you know that type of Big way? Time. Yeah. Um, he started on the streets singing. Um, Literally. Same think, as Darren Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started, started busking. <laughs> like, um, it's sad to see their their gigs get cancelled. Do you know what I mean? Like, you kind of go, ah, you know, give them a break. Like, you know what I mean? They've been hustling. It is. 10 or 12 years. Give them their yeah. like, 10 years in the spotlight at least. Like, And the, the government can do it. They, they have places that could do it. Yep. But it's just being ignored. I, I don't I see coming from the pub aspect of things like you know you, they, they're saying you have to be out by like 11 o'clock and you know like there there's, doesn't seem to be any sense to it there really no, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be any sense of it like and the that. 9 euro food just doesn't make sense well see the idea behind that I can understand because they they had to make a choice of whether they were going to have the pubs and restaurants closed and see, 90% of the restaurants now serve alcohol. They have their pub license. And 90% of the pubs now serve food, eat or or. Okay. So, like, there was only 3,000 wet pubs in the country. And I okay. think, in my own opinion, now this is a, an idiot's opinion of it, I think what they had to do was they had to stop people from just drinking in the restaurants that had staff paid for um, kitchen staff and stuff like that. Yeah. So they wanted you to go into the bar, have something to eat to keep the people employed. To stop people just uh, yes. restaurants all the time. Yeah, makes sense. Right? So, like, and the thing about it was they had to make it a substantial meal, so it kind of had to be a dinner. So you were keeping the chefs, you were keeping the waitress staff, you were keeping um, everybody else involved, whereas if you just had a restaurant that served alcohol, you would just have lads in there drinking and taking the piss out of it, and there'd be no okay. food served. Because you'd get... Are you, yeah, are you back open now with Cozy? Uh, no, not yet. We got hit with the flood there a couple of weeks ago and we got uh, absolutely mangled in that too. Yeah, we lost everything. <laughs> ah, what a kick in so, the face. We should have been opened one day, but um, no, we are looking to see, we would be hoping to open before Christmas. Could you open a swimming pool? Open a pub? You know what, right <laughs> now, I, I'd open anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would try anything really, but um, yeah, look, it's just 2020. It's just one of them years, man, you know, you, you gotta just keep fighting, you yeah. keep swinging because um, it's. I definitely don't think it's over. Um, but no, no, no. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I it, like the likes of venues are closing down left, right, and center. And small concert venues. Oh, it's mad. Hundred people that would have these real yeah. intimate concerts. They're all going like. Yeah, there's gonna be none left. There really isn't. And the worst thing about it is, if this happens. And all these small venues go because, like, they're all in, like, you look like the Vicar Street or any of the, the small yeah. or the Academy or anywhere like that. These are all inner city uh, venues that are playing absolutely ridiculous amount of money for rates and stuff like that. And if they go, there's going to be no stepping stone for artists in this country. There's going to be no. Not at all. 
Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you go from 1500 then to the O2, which will hold 5000, then you go from there then to Crow Park. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to have to do some serious hustling to go from uh, Vicar Street to the O2, or then go from O2 to Crow uh, Park. You know what I mean? I'm going to cut a lot of artists out. Very difficult. Like, like I suppose Vicar Street, you have capacity of what, 1100 or something, and then Three Arena, which is like 13,000. Yeah. That's a big step up. And like a lot of artists can, a lot of artists could easily fill the thicker street, but then trying to fill a three arena with 13,000, it's a long shot. It is a long shot. And see, that's what will happen is like if you sell out, if you sell out thicker street with say 10 nights in a row, you'll sell out one night in the O2, you know? Yeah. Or the arena or whatever it's called. It was the point back And you're paying for staff continuously for throughout, those, throughout those nights. Yeah, man. It's scary. It's scary mm. times. I genuinely don't know what's going to happen with the industry. I have no idea what's going to happen with the industry because you're going to lose the likes of the Gavin Jameses. You're going to lose the likes of yeah. because they're not going to have anywhere to start. No, and then artists from other countries won't want to fly into Ireland because they won't be able to sell out three arena or they don't want to play smaller venues like Ficker Street. So yeah. it's a tough one. It is a tough one, man. And then, like, it has a, such a tricker effect down. You've got the likes of you guys then taking photos, and you've got all the, the surrounding industries, which is within the industry, you know? You've got the guy sweeping up yeah. after the concert. You know what I mean? Where's his job going to be? So it's it's very, very hard to see what's actually going uh, to say, It's anyone's guess at the stage. Yeah, man. It's scary. It is definitely going to be scary. But how have you been spending? You've yeah. been spending uh, lockdown down in Bantry. Has it been nice getting back home? Do you want to say that again? Can I broke up a bit? No, we broke up there just with Wi-Fi. Problems with Wi-Fi, ladies and gentlemen. This is the best thing about living in a room. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> we good? You can hear me now? Uh, give it a sec. Let's just see. Give it two seconds. There we are. We're back. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah. Bit like frozen, still lagging. Jesus, lads. Come on with the lagging. We'll get there. We will get there. I don't think I'll be doing much live feed anymore if the problem with this Wi-Fi is continuing. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, but yeah, you've been spending ba- you spent spend lockdown back in Banshee. Was it nice to kick it back home again for a while? It was nice. It was nice to kind of catch up with the family and then obviously when things ease up a bit, to kind of go out and see some friends. And then obviously Banshee's surrounded by uh, beaches and landscapes. Yeah. Great. It's a perfect place to be. It is cool. And you know what? It was nice not to, and I've said this a couple of times, it's nice not to have to be packed into an area like it is in the cities. Like, you know what I mean? You were able to walk along the Abbey or you were able to walk along the uh, the Cove Walk there, the Bakey and stuff like that. It's phenomenal. And the weather was savage as well, like which really helped lockdown down here, I think. Are you gone? For Don't Match, it's grand. Grand distance. It is. It is pretty cool. You're breaking up a tiny bit, turns. We keep breaking up, man. We no worries. Up. I'm not sure if it's my end doing it. We'll get it. We'll get it. Hold on. We'll get you again. Two seconds there <laughs> now. La, 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 la. Now, can you hear me? No? Gone? Ah, this is the problem. What happens with this Wi-Fi? Da, 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 da. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. You can hear me now. Right, we're back. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we're all good, man. I'm telling you, this Wi-Fi, we, it's it's killing down here in, in, in rural Ireland. It's absolutely disastrous. I'm uh, sure their shanty towns are better Wi-Fi than we have down here. There is. Even the mobile networks are not great down there. Nah, we've got too much too much scenery, too much mountains and stuff like that. That's it. Embrace the scenery. Embrace the landscape. <laughs> man, you got to do something. you got to do something because it's... We you don't do. Have great down here so we've got to sort something out a lot of swimming <laughs> swim around the bay a bit <laughs> swim around the bay a little bit that's a nice bay man it is a nice bay so what's the it's plans for the bay. rest of the year do we have any concerts or anything like that that's going to be going ahead or what's the plan um, there's a few kind of social distance gigs happening in Dublin mm-hmm. but at, as of the current moment I'm already too pushed because mm-hmm. so I'm doing a lot of photo shoots at the moment which is great and then I might be heading back to London in October possibly so they're the kind of plans, just kind of catch up with all work and all that. We got a question yeah. coming in from Aiden Lynham. He goes, your first inspiration for t- photography. Who was? Who was? How did you get it? Why did you get it? 
Who's your inspiration? That's a hard one, isn't it? Hey. Hang on a sec, you're breaking up again. I suppose hang on, hang on. that's a very tough one. There's a lot of photographers. Um, I suppose the first inspiration I can think of is Henry Cartier-Bresson. So Henry is a magnum... From where? I said, is he married to a local girl? No, he's not. He is <laughs> much further away from us. Basically, he was around in the early kind of 1900s and then and he was kind of a photojournalist and uh-huh. he did some of the kind of iconic shots. And then I suppose my main inspiration as of now would be Mick Rock. So he uh-huh. is a concert Mick Rock. So he's nicknamed the Man of Shot of the 70s. So he went to Cambridge University with Sid Barrett. So he worked on the early days of Sid from Pink Floyd. And then he's worked with Motley Crue. He's done everything. David Bowie, he did the front cover of The Transformer for Lou Reed. So yeah, he'd be my kind of main inspiration. And that's kind of, that's what I was saying, is this where the whole sort of uh, rock and roll types, you know what I mean, the Rolling Stones meet uh, the Sex Pistols type of work? I think so. Is that where where inspiration has sort of come from? It would be. Like I've got a lot of inspiration from uh, Mick. Like I've done a few photo shoots kind of inspired from him. So that was cool. And yeah, like he's done some amazing work. Still some of the best work in the music scene today. We've got Aiden coming in as well. Colour or black and white, which is your favourite? Um, for a long time it's black and white. And then gradually I'm kind of switching more to colour. But uh, colour and black and white has their kind of, their set times. That yeah. makes sense. They have their place. They do, definitely, definitely. <laughs> And I will be assuming that black and white looks cooler in concerts and stuff like that than color. Oh, would you like say if there was kind of there was a spotlight? Say there's like one spotlight coming down the person, like black one would be perfect. So it kind of really, and um, the person really stand out with them kind of in the spotlight and everything else blacked out. And then color is great for really kind of vibrant like festivals with like a, a lot of lights and a lot of confetti. Yeah, yeah. So you can catch all the sort of the rainbow rain as we called it back in the day. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's a cool name for it. An old DJ told me that before. He says, get the rainbow rain ready. And I was looking at him going, what's a rainbow rain? Like, I didn't have a clue what it was. <laughs> and he said, going over there, get the gun ready. So I got this big thing that I didn't even know. <laughs> Fire it. I hadn't a clue what was going to come out of it. So I shot it and out popped all the confetti. But uh, yeah, the rainbow rain. That's an old one. Um, it's good fun, but just don't light any cigarettes around it because it just goes <laughs> like that. Serious fire hazard. <laughs> Oh, rain, rain. Huh? I'm gonna start using it. Do use it away, man. It's free. I won't. Happy right days. Now. Sick. Okay. <laughs> so you have to have some funny stories along the way. Have you ever got the camera clean knocked out of your hand or anything like that? Um, I've never. Oh, there was. So there's one concert. So I was on tour with the Cronas up in Wexford, I believe, on their Irish tour. And I was in the crowd getting ready to get a shot of the CO2 going up. So I'm pointing my camera at the stage, waiting for it. And then this man in the crowd starts putting his hand in front of the camera. So the first time I pull it down, does it again. I pull it down a second time. Third time he puts it up. I turn around to him and then we nearly get into a fight. And I remember Danny from Cronus saying after the gig that he nearly stopped it because he saw what's happening. So I suppose that's one of the funnier stories I have and I bet you there's a lot that I won't mention funniest funniest guy on the planet putting his hand in front of the camera I bet you he's oh. a comedic genius oh com- comedic genius yeah, he's up there with the f- like Will Ferrell all them but no biggest idiot on the planet <laughs> but I bet you he thought he was funny like I said he's oh I'll catch this fella no take it up oh sure look if I if I was in the crowd I thought I, I would have thought it was hilarious but <laughs> when you have to deal with crowds and getting through crowds it gets annoying yeah. but you learn to deal with it thankfully I've never had to be in a crowded situation I'm always either on top or behind so I'm, I'm alright I never get in stuck it's in like it. being behind the bar and you get an annoying customer kind of clicking the fingers that's yeah. just like yeah I don't I don't serve them people <laughs> no no one should I turn around and say you know what no take your snappy fingers and snap them somewhere else my friend <laughs> 
served here. Nope. Anyone can serve anywhere else. Nope. No, no, no. Common courtesy. Or do you know what yeah. the worst or the absolute worst thing is, right? And this is the worst. This is my absolute pet peeve, right? They'll go like this. They'll go, uh, can I get two Heineken, a bottle, a bottle of Coors, a Bulmers. Now we're not getting any advertisement here, so I'm just naming them off. Uh, a bottle of Coors and they'll turn around and they'll go, oh, I'll have a patty and I'll get this and that and the other. And oh yeah, can I get six Guinness as well, please? Oh, they start adding on. Yeah. Adding on. And then they want to pay at the end for the big bill. And you're like, either stop adding on or pay now. Ah, it's infuriating. But they, uh, or, else, or else they'll give you the big list and they'll go, can I pay for the four pints of Guinness with this money? And can I pay for the uh, the, the triple vodkas with this money? And can I have that uh, back as well, please? Like? It's just no need for it. <laughs> Or when you're trying to kick people out of the bar when it's closing time yeah. and people then, like, they're trying to get another drink and you're trying not to serve them and then you say, if you maybe a mate's coming in, you want to give yeah. them a drink, but you can't because you're trying to get other people out. So it's all part of the game. That's it. Like I always said, having a pub is like having an adult crash. It is. It really is. That's really what it is. You know what I mean? You don't, yeah. you don't find the, the, never underestimate the power of stupidity. That's what oh. I, uh, my saying is, I say, I say, you have a lot of silly stories now. Quite a few of them, <laughs> Quite a few of them but I can't say here either for legal reasons. <laughs> of course, of course. We've got another question. Aiden's checking in. He he's liking his photography nowadays. He's checking. If money was no object, what camera would you purchase? If money was no object, what camera would you purchase? <sighs> oh, I I'd go with nearly a Leica. So they're these really fancy thirty-five millimeter film cameras. Film. Backwards. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm doing a lot of film work now. So they cost maybe three grand. They're like they're gorgeous cameras. Otherwise, I go for a Sony AR seven AR S seven three. I believe it's one of the new Sony ranges for digital. Those cameras are a beast. Like the low light capabilities in them are just phenomenal. Really, really good. But they're expensive, and I can't afford that right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep on wishing. <laughs> do do what my good friend Victor Barry does. Pretend to buy the camera and then say he's going to make a load of money on it from YouTube videos and doing that type of stuff. And uh, yeah, big shout out to Victor Barry. He did, he he tells his wife he's going to buy a really expensive camera, make all the money back on YouTube videos that he's going to do and tutorials, and slowly forgets about the camera and puts it on the shelf. <laughs> I like that. I like that way. So see, he has he has a way of. Uh, he has a way of getting his cameras regardless. So yeah, and avoiding mean. danger. Avoiding danger with the wife. Yeah, giving her some yes. <laughs> to turn around and say, "Well, uh, yeah, I'm working on them videos. I'm wor- I'm working on the videos." He loves the Sony stuff as well. He's got that old school Sony camera feel to everything he does. Yeah, um, and uh, to be fair, I quite like the Sony stuff as well. You know, it's great. It's robust. It's clean. Every- everything Sony for all. Yeah. All media stuff, I think, is great. Do you know what I mean? Like, I remember Sony cassette players and Sony v, uh, VHF tapes. Even the Sony headphones. Yeah. They're, they're just Sony. great. I've yeah. got the Beats. I, I bought it. For the oh. Commercial side of things, yeah. But you I, got ripped off. I like Beats. I do like Beats. I love them. I had I had the uh, the studio versions, and I have the, the, I had the original studio versions of these big white ones. Okay. And I got these. The these are studios or they're solos. I'm not quite sure, but um, I love them. I absolutely yeah. love them. I've only I'm like for what 15 years of DJ, and I've only ever had them. Happy days. So you and made your money there. back. Yeah, I've definitely got my money back. Yeah. 100 percent. We've got uh, Aiden's checking in again. Hold on, we've got a couple of lads saying hello to us. Uh, you had the Hawaii P10, he said, or the Hawaii P10. He says, I know you had the Hawaii P10. Whatever. Yeah, so I had the Huawei P10 Pro before, uh-huh. and now I have the Huawei P20. Like for cameras on phones, they're quite good. Yeah, you know what I mean. Really, really good. You need that too, just to take snap, 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 snap. You know what I mean? Oh, you do, because like, say if I was walking in Dublin City now, didn't have the camera and thing, and I save a few jobs coming up. If I saw a spot, I like take the photo and then screenshot the Google Map, so I had the exact spot, so I can then go back to there and use it as a location. Mm-hmm. That's a cool way of remembering. That's that's a really awesome way of uh, sort of notebooking yeah. where everything is in the city, isn't it? 
it is. It's really easy, really quick, and then you know exactly where to go. No wasting time, kind of looking for the spot. Cool. We've so, got yeah. lads coming in. We've got Russell Barry saying hello to you. He says you're the goat. Uh, yeah, got- I was just with him an hour or two ago. <laughs> That's all right. He's checking in. He's saying he loves you. He's a big fan. Uh, we got Barry O'Driscoll saying hello to everybody. Uh, we got Elon McGettity. I think I'm saying this wrong. Elon McGettigan, yes. McGettigan. All the lads down the road. <laughs> says, what's your opinion on Snapchat? Uh, okay, so turns. <laughs> Basically. This is what happens when friends get involved now. Uh, anyway, so you obviously know the app Snapchat. Yes, I do. So I deleted the app because it's a waste of time. It's not productive. I end up scrolling on the stories. So people want, I've told Eli this, I've told the lads this, and I'll tell anyone this. If they want to get in contact with me, they can use Instagram, they can use WhatsApp, they can use my phone number, or they can even email me. If people really want to, they'll get through to me. If not, I don't care. <laughs> so, yeah. No Snapchat. No Snapchat. Just don't need it. <laughs> That's all right too, man. That's cool. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I like it's like this TikTok thing as well. I quite like the idea behind TikTok, but it's just gone. It blew out. It's too. mad. People can make a lot of money off it. It's banned now in the states. Yeah, that's because of Trump, though. He thinks it's the whole China checking in. To be fair, you never know. <laughs> Maybe they could be watching us right now. Yeah, it could be. Could be, and you know, I was. I remember I was on. Uh, I was. I was doing a podcast. I forget. I think it was with Amy Weidner, and we started talking about something completely off topic. Something like what well, this happens. Like I said, I have no plans for these podcasts. And I remember we were talking about something like billionaires or something like that, or who. I think it was something about Bill Gates and someone else. Just something general like that. Got off the phone or got off the um, the, the podcast, and instantly when I went back onto Facebook, hit me with it. Oh, popped up. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, that it's is... It's mad. They're literally listening to everything. Listening yeah. for keywords, and then it pops up. Yeah. Now, if you're lazy like me, and you love that type of advertising, and you love that type of uh, just click and go type situation, it's fantastic, because oh, I'm it's great. just saying random things into my phone to see if they'll find them for me. Like, <laughs> and they do, go, they do a good job. Do you know what? They don't do a bad job. They don't do a bad job. Not too bad for certain things, and then you get the weirdest of shit. Like, you know what I mean? Or what's that? What's that website that sells really cheap stuff? Wish. I was getting oh, it. <laughs> wish. Like, there's jumpers with all sorts on it. And there's like, oh, I'm man. not going to get into it. <laughs> there is the weirdest shit. There's weird stuff. <laughs> and it really is, man. Like, it's like, how, like, I, you know what? Some of the stuff that has come up with my things, I can't even share it because I'm going. No. No. Where in my history have they found out that I'm phone <laughs> this type of stuff like you know? But there's people out there buy that stuff. So I'd say there is. There's a there's a there's a head for, or was it there's a hat for every head, isn't there? There is. Yeah. So I'd be assuming that yeah, there is certain people that do buy things that um, are yeah. we'll say of questionable. <laughs> <laughs> you never quite know, do you? Really, do you, like you, you never know what goes on behind behind closed doors. But uh, I normally just get hit up with podcasts uh, setups that are like um, like for everything is like fifty quid. Buy on Wish right now. Yeah, like for fifty quid, you kind of go. Mm, will I just mm. see what I can get? Oh, what sort that will happen? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, what sort that could happen? Yeah, I, I I pay fifty euros and get hit with fifteen hundred euros. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that could happen too. You never know. So we're looking back and we've got to go through everything. Now, come on, we're going to go through the whole thing. What was your first concert? What was the first concert you started taking pictures of? Ooh, first concert was in a venue called Fred Zeppelin's mm-hmm. in Cork City. Okay. So the room is is capacity of about 50. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, going even further back. I think one of the first gigs is in the Mariner. The Mariner? Who was it? The remember? Mariner in Banshee. Oh, I yeah. don't remember the name. But one one of the first first gigs was the uh, the Calvinist in Oliver Plunkett. Yeah, I I remember that. Yeah, that was way back in the day. Oh, that was like three four years ago. That's longer than that. Has to be longer than that, brother. I couldn't tell you. It's definitely six or seven years ago, man. Had to be. Don't even. I 
couldn't tell you. I'm gonna have to find out after. But um, yeah, so that was my one of the first gigs. No, there's bound to be one of them out there listening to us. So whenever, whenever any of the lads there um, that were playing in it that can give us a shout out when they were playing, the Calvinists were around. When when was that? That was like 2010, 2011. I think so. They're oh, they're such a good band. Such a good band. They were a serious talent. They were serious. like New York Times tipped was the next U two. Yeah, which is mental. Yep, really was, and they and they were hot. They were yeah. front cover hot press magazine. Yep, yeah, we're getting surely more than three years ago. Yeah, Thomas, I think definitely longer than three <laughs> years ago. We've got oh man, I nearly have to Google that. See, this is what is one man machine. I wish I was Joe Rogan. I just turn around to. Uh, What's well, Jamie? Jamie, Google when the Calvinists were out, and he'd be able to give me it up. Yeah. Uh, hold on, let's see if we can do this while I'm still. Uh, do do do. Press. Lose absolutely everything there now. Hang on a second, Calvinists. No worries. Hold on. Twenty fourteen. God, God damn it, yeah, 2014. How'd you get that before I did? Just Google on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got my phone here. I should have picked up my phone rather than being snazzy and going to my computer on the on the other side of me. 2014. So, yeah, was that was that the year that they were actually in Hot Press or on Hot Press? God damn No, that was, I believe, when King of Lies came out. I think it was like a review. Yeah. I'm not sure when they were on the cover. I presume it was sometime after that. Yeah, definitely. Um, hold on, that's a year ago because they're talking about. Um, uh, da, da, da. Yeah, they're they're talking about Port Tyke. So that was that was a year yeah. ago. So yeah. You are talking 2012, 2013, 2014, 8 and 9, I'm just saying. Okay. So that's when the sort of... So we went too far away. Three years ago? No. Come on, uh, <laughs> Someone that was born in 2020 now is... Or someone was born in 20... 2020. What am I talking about? Something born in 2000 is now 20 years of age. That's scary. Ah, oh, that's mad. That's me getting old, man. That's me getting so freaking old. Sure, look at my younger sister. She's 19 now, and I'm like... Time flies. <laughs> we got Aiden checking in as well. What was your first camera you bought? Aiden's really gone into the okay. history of it. The first camera I bought was a bridge camera. It was like a Nikon Coolpix. Don't know the exact model. So basically, a bridge is in between a DLSR and kind of a point shoe camera. Yes, yeah, so basically, the lens can zoom, but you can't take it off. That makes sense? Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. So that was the first camera. That's pretty cool. That was a nice start. Yeah. Nice start. And then gradually kind of upgraded and yeah. Gathered a nice collection of love. So do you take a lot with you when you're on the road? Do you take them all with you or do you just have like two or three that are with you depending on the shot? <sighs> Depend like uh, the bag's usually full. Like I'd say I have two main cameras that have two lenses attached. Mm-hmm. And then I'd have a film camera, um, a fisheye film camera, which gets really wide shots. And then I have a, a fish eye, a fish, a fish eye camera. So it's called a lamography fish eye. So it's basically, it's a really, really wide kind of view. Okay. So like, say if you were literally nose to nose of me, you'd be still pretty wide. Oh. Yeah. And then obviously like the flash and then other lenses and whatnot. So yeah, you kind of carry something for every scenario. You're not you're not sort of hitting it up with all them boys that you see like the paparazzi and they're running with these big freaking Oh I don't like paparazzi turns. <laughs> I even got a tattoo about my uh, my dislike towards them. Oh yeah, really? Let's see if I can show you there. Go on, let's see. Uh, uh, give, us give us a second, no, we're all at the break in it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make it any clearer that way, brother. You can't no. They're not photographers, Terrence, I'm telling you. Like, the photographer that photographed Prince Diana's crash, he he followed her, made 50 grand off the photographs. He also heli- he hired a helicopter, made 30 grand to get photos of celebrities in their backyard. And Amy Winehouse, one of the main reasons of her 
like basically about her passing away is because paparazzi being based in central London being surrounded by paparazzi. 100%. And it, do you know what? It was, um, I only read recently, it wasn't like masses amount of drugs that killed her off. It was her bulimia that actually killed her off. Yeah. And then she died of like a common flu, which of course her immune system was down to zero, but it was the common flu that basically killed her off. Everyone was like, oh, drug overdose, drug overdose. But I think the autopsy, autopsy came back as uh, bulimia was what killed her. Okay. Like there obviously was considerate <laughs> Yeah, a lot of issues and a lot of drugs involved, but not every, not every kind of rockstar dies from drugs. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barry O'Driscoll's getting in. Show us the new tattoo, Nick. Do you have? No, a- I have another tattoo. <laughs> not for not for viewing. No, people have to pay if they want to see it. <laughs> pay per view, like. There's paparazzi's out there <laughs> saying, "Have you learned a new language from your traveling with your photography?" Um, I've learned a few words of Basque because I was over in the Basque country yeah. to work on some promo with a friend. Okay. So I think like I've learned Kaisho and Eskalagaske and they're my new words I've learned from traveling. It's all right. It's more than what I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at languages, so. Get it out, he wants. These boys are giving you a hard time, aren't they? They're really slaggy. This is what happens when friends get involved. You know, they're like, they want to make absolute mortification of the person yeah. that's on, on with us, like, you know. But you're playing it yeah. cool, man. You're not playing it cool. I'll give you that. They can do what they want. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> that's it, man. That is it. You got to be tough out there. You definitely got to be tough. Um, what's it like? Have you ever have you ever gone to a gig where you've lost a battery? Where you've run out of, run out of power? Um, I was doing a job recently. And uh-huh. I, it's, it was involved a lot of video work. So it's yeah. kind of the first time using a gimbal. So basically it's like a, it stabilizes your camera. Stabilizer things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you can like move it to go in different directions and stuff. But I didn't realize that the battery life is actually much shorter than what it tells you in the package. So we were in the middle of doing video work and I went out and then we had to recharge, went out again. And then by the end of it, it just wouldn't work at all. So. That was my battery issue. But like I, lo- I tend to lose something ever I go. I've lost lens caps. I've lost. I've even left lenses behind on stage. So I have to run back and get them. But they're expensive. They are. Camera gear is expensive. It's the same as decks or any podcast equipment or whatnot. It's all money. Yeah, man. Come on. You know what they say. If it isn't a hobby unless it costs you a fortune. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it would it would be a job if it was for free. That's what. That's what oh, I'm stop! For. Everyone, everyone would do. It for, everyone would do it if it was free. That's it, man. But you know what? There's stuff out there that you can make. Uh, these filters and stuff like that. Anybody can make a good picture now, which is really sad because you don't need the um, the expertise to have it. You don't need that eye. You know what I mean? You don't need the. Knowledge. You don't. It's just it's higher than like people who are making a living from, it, and then you have people come along and start making money off smartphone photos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or even like, say, if people get photos of uh, shots on their like old film cameras, like any shot on a film camera is going to look great. Yeah, yeah. You have yeah. to have kind of the composition. You have to have the moment to kind of enhance the, I suppose the yeah, the power of the image. Yeah, but you got to have the knowledge too, man. You got to. You have do. You do. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like you it's, gotta know it's like any kind of business like that. You do, and you learn as you go along. Like I've learned so much as I like, went along. And, like I went to college for a year to study photography, so I actually dropped out and I actually learned more outside the course than the course itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's a lot of um, uh, what's the easiest way with photography? You know, it's it's one of them trades that you can't learn from a book. You know, you kind of have you can't. to. You kind of have to like get involved, see what works, what doesn't work. Um, it's like DJing. You can be given a great set list yeah. and you can be say, look, that set list will work out nine times out of ten for you, but it's that one time. But that one out time out of ten, you have to be prepared for that. Yeah, man. And that's and that's where knowledge is key, I think. Yeah, hundred percent. Trial and error. Uh, a lot of trial and error. Yeah, but it's not trial and error once you know. <laughs> you know? You when you make it look easy, you know you're doing a good job. That's what I always say. Yeah. When you make it look really easy, um, when it doesn't look like you're working and you're able to still have a good time while doing it, um, I think then that's when you have then to you're it. 
then you've aced it. That's yeah. what I think anyway. Whereas if you're sweating yeah. and you're going, oh, Jesus, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I remember when I first started DJing, I used to have, like, the next song queued with two minutes left. Now I don't even know what song I'm going to play less uh, until the last yeah. second of the song I'm playing beforehand. You know what I mean? Because then you only start paying attention to what's really on the stage and you're, or what's really on the dance floor. You're going... Do you? You work the crowd. Yeah. That's it, man. And like okay, I said... I remember... Um, I remember I was doing my, one of my first big concerts in the Live at the Marquis. So it was one of the first shows for the Coronas I did. Yeah. So I did... I got the first night through Instagram from one of the lads. And then I they invited me back for a second night. So I decided to buy a white t-shirt for it, which is a big no-no in the kind of... Uh, backstage life because you have to wear all black so I was quickly brought out they gave me a t-shirt yeah I could have been fired on the spot but he was okay about it and now we're good friends so all is good that is cool <laughs> yeah yeah of course you need to be blacked out in the background you do especially if you're running on stage like you you don't want to take folks away from the artist oh, I can imagine what that looks like <laughs> a white t-shirt coming running onto the stage oh, looking no. at you go, where's your man going but it was great to learn it kind of early on. Yeah. And you know, you, yeah. you wouldn't know it unless you did it. Exactly. And now I know it. We're black. Always. Always. Always, yeah. always, always. Barry O'Driscoll comes in. Have you got any favorite trips that you went on for photography, Nick? Um, I suppose recently it was the new rules. Uh, jobs. It's kind of living and working with them for two weeks. So we spent pretty much all the time together. And then I linked up with Declan McKenna. Um, the Clockworks. I was in Unity Studios with them, so that's where the Stone Roses recorded their first album. So that was pretty cool. That's and then cool. I was like, uh, "Go on, Ed." No, what were you saying? No, no, go on, shout, shout ahead. You're fine. And then obviously, like the Basque Country, because the Basque is gorgeous, really cheap, lovely weather. People are very, very friendly. And then, yeah, any trip over to England, any trip abroad, really, being on, being on the road pretty cool though isn't it like to get it paid kind of like it is nice feeling to get paid to do something that you love as well like it is it's i wouldn't change it that's cool man that's cool you know you're living the life when when work's not work you know when you're able to to enjoy it aiden lineup's jumping in as well aiden thank you brother for enjoy your stuff he says uh any photo which what's your fa- oh wait, hold on wait a second we think it's just this right any favorite photo which you wish you had have taken so what's your favorite photo that you didn't take i'm guessing Are we gone? We still Do you want to say that again? Connection went. Yeah, no hassle, man. I'm telling you, I'm going to be ringing these people. We're sitting. Good morning. What's your favorite <laughs> photo that you didn't take? Oh, God. Favorite God. photo that I didn't take. There we go. We're back. Um, favorite photo that I haven't taken is either the one of Johnny Cash holding a cigarette in Folsom Prison Blues or the iconic class shot of the guitar getting smashed on the ground or either a shot of Freddie Mercury on stage at Live Aid because the crowd for that is just ridiculous that is that 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 would have been absolutely bomb. it's one of the best gigs of all time oh, 100% 100% oh, top three like Freddie is a you're gone again we're clicking in and out all the time hold on a second guys bear with us there's going to be someone getting an angry phone call in the morning. Hang on two seconds. Nicholas, are you still there with his brother? Are you gone again? Da, 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 da. Nicholas, are you there, brother? Are you gone? I see what happens when you do live. Live podcasting, guys. I don't know whether we'll be doing much more live. This is what's happening. Nicholas, are you still there, brother? Are you gone? No, I think he could be gone, folks. Hmm. This is a first. I've never lost a guest before. Yeah, we've lost him. Right. Hang on a second, guys. We're going to see if we can get Nicholas back. He has probably... We've lost him. So I tell you what, guys. We're going to click off for just a couple of seconds, and we're going to see if we can get back to him. Oh, hi. He's coming back into us. Hello, guys. Sorry about that. What's happening? Good, good. All good again. Yes, cool. But we were talking about Freddie Mercury in the Live yeah. Aid gig. That was some serious, serious artistry. Like, you know what I mean? He was, oh. he was a master of entertainment. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And the movie on him as well. It's great. Yeah. I, I'd actually, do you know what? The one problem I had about that movie was it was the Queen story, not the Freddie Mercury story. I'd like to see his story. 
true. I suppose people kind of see Freddie as more kind of queen. It's it's hard to please everyone. Especially, oh, of course. Yeah. It's still a great movie. It's oh, a yeah. Fantastic piece yeah. of, of, of music history. You know, it was an absolutely great, great movie. Uh, but I think it doesn't... Um, I read somewhere, probably whether it be true or not, I'm not sure. You might have to check it up. But I think Sasha Baracan is after getting the rights to the Freddie Mercury story. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that'd be cool. Him doing Freddie Mercury would be fairly cool. Or him even directing a movie because that guy is pretty cool as well. That'd be very cool. I would pay for him. Yeah, I would would watch that. That'd be cool. (laughs) <laughs> uh, it's like I felt like the whole movie was very PC orientated, and Freddie Mercury was mad. Like you know what I mean? Oh yeah, mad. That was the yeah. only way. <laughs> only way to describe it. Like the guy was, he had energy on just a different, different level. I watched uh. a video of him on YouTube where he is uh, bantering with the crowd, and he's doing the um, the back and forth where he's going hello, 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 like God. the old lady stuff. Yeah. And uh, they're they're giving back to him as good as they're getting. Like that, like he had him eating out of the absolute hand. Every twice yeah. he played, the control he had over them was just uh, something else. And not every artist can do that. No, and not, not to any, not that extent as well. Yeah, and you know what? Not every artist would have the balls to do something like that. No, do you know what I mean. Like now the artists are like, right, we've got to get our set done. There can't be three or four minutes within the delay, or they they don't have. They don't have that on the spot type of uh, charisma to hold on to things. You know what I mean? Like your whole stage could go down. You could lose ninety percent of your power and just give Freddie Mercury a microphone and like oh, and it's still blow away, blow the power, and let yeah. you get back up and running again. You know what I mean? There's there's not too many of them bands around there that can that can still do it. You know what I mean? No, and it's hard as well because like nowadays music is more of a business. Yeah. So like you have to you have to get your set done in time. And if you run over any, if you run over any bit, like for instance, with the new rules when they're sporting Little Mix on tour, I remember I stopped them for a sec when they're coming off stage yeah. to get a shot at three of them. We were about 10 seconds over and their tour manager got it, still got in trouble for that. Yeah, just goes to show it has to be down to exact times. And like, it's mad. Yeah, it's, everyone's being paid by the hour. Or yeah. everybody's being paid by the minute if you break it down like that, you know? Yeah. And that makes it even harder than again for you guys to get your shots in because it's like there'd be nothing better than taking a picture of guys just coming off stage. Like literally it is. walking yeah. down the steps, you know what I mean? Um and that and that'd be great. We got Barry coming in again. He's saying your favorite Facebook profile picture photo. There was a lot of nouns in that. Favorite um, profile picture photo. There we are. Hope any shot there. any photo of the Nyman? <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> like, what are you supposed to say to a question like that? <laughs> like, <laughs> thanks, Barry. That was the hardest question I've ever had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> you got an answer, though. I hope that answers, Barry. I hope that helps you. <laughs> I hope that helps answer that question. And uh, we got Russell Barry coming in. Uh, oh, Aiden, the most grumpiest person. I'm guessing he's the most. Or, Who's the most grumpiest person you've worked with? That's what I'm guessing he's trying to ask. Or else he's saying that I am the most grumpiest person you've probably worked with. Either or, he wants to know the most grumpiest person you've worked for. Um, I'm not going to answer that. answer that, isn't it? It's going to be hard because you never know. You might get a call again off him. Like, I'm just going to leave that as blank. That's for the autobiography. Yes, exactly. <laughs> again, you have to pay for that. You got to pay for these questions. It doesn't come for free. <laughs> The exclusive. Watch out. Hello Magazine will be next. And we'll get all them questions answered. There wouldn't be a problem at all. No. Uh, I think we've got everybody's questions answered. Let me just check. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, we got Barry back up here. He goes, have you any favorite trips that you went to? Oh, no, we asked that one already. Barry, we got that one already. Aiden Lynham's laughing here now because he's trying to get both of us into trouble. Yeah, fucker. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we already t- touched on this, but Thomas Nolan's getting in on it, saying, "What's the thoughts on the future of the music scene?" Uh, it's, it's a tough one. Like it's on the hinges at the moment. Like I, we need Ireland needs government support. I know there's a stimulus package of eight million going out, and they're going to be giving grants to bands for releasing EPs and singles. But uh, until the virus is here, there's not much that's going to happen. Yeah. Because you can't push, like for festivals, for instance, like Electric Picnic, you have 
this year it's supposed to be 75,000. It was an upgrade of like 6,000 or so. And to have that much people in one space, there's going to be at least one person that'll have it. Yeah. And then that one person will interact with thousands on that day. Yeah. And then it will just spread like wildfire and we'll be back to square one, if not worse. Yeah, man. It's, um, I don't know. I genuinely, it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be scared of it if I got it myself. I'm saying that now. Watch, I'll probably get it in two weeks and die. But uh, I, I scared of passing it on. That's my problem. Yeah, yeah. I'd be afraid of who I'd pass it on to. That's that's what the big thing is. Uh, yeah. That's what I'd be more worried about. I wouldn't be sort of necessarily cared about myself getting it because I'd hopefully think I'd be able to beat it. But, ah, I think so. Like, there's, I, they say like ninety nine percent of people, ninety nine point nine percent of people with no underlying conditions won't die from it. Yeah. So, like, I don't know, man. I think there's a lot of propaganda behind this. There is. There is. I wonder, is this uh, a prelude to what could happen? Or is this just a, a warm up exercise? Because there's been a lot in every country, bar Sweden, because you can see them doing the herd uh, immunity. There's been a lot of uh, legislation passed to get a lot of places locked down very, very quickly. All yeah. across the EU. You know what I mean? So, like, this. This um, these rules, relegations, relegations, regulations um, are not going to be going away. They're always going to be there, and like at a snap of a, of a finger or a snap of a hand, they're going to be brought straight back in again. So, I don't know, man. Maybe we're maybe we're warming up for something worse. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me with my conspiracy head on. No, it's it's so hard to know. You hear one thing, you hear another thing. Yep, you definitely yeah. we definitely don't know where this is going, and in such a small country, no. we can't afford to lose anybody. We can't, especially the economy as well. It's going to be so hard to shut the whole country down again. They're talking about it. Donegal is going to lockdown tonight, I think. So we're yeah. bringing Cork into lockdown, and then as you know, Dublin's in lockdown for three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just all up in the air. Yeah, it's kind of a blessing and a, a curse all at the one time with the pub being closed right now and not being able to open it because um, <laughs> we've got Aiden O'Sullivan coming in saying, where did the virus originate from? We're not scientists, brother. We're not scientists. We don't have a clue. No. We, we can say we can say uh, in a special place in Wuhan, or we can just say it came from apparently natural natural creation formed it. But that's one theory I heard. It's so basically when the environment's right and the weather's right and mm-hmm. the climate's right, then I don't know icebergs have been melted and then they release this virus as we call COVID nineteen. But again, who knows? Yeah, it could be could be something that's been locked in stones for years and years and years. Yeah. Up and, and just a volcano erupted and boom, it went out. But, um, yeah, I kind of think this is man made to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, I'm kind of thinking because the more you kind of look into it, they were testing, um, a virus in Wuhan, uh, Wuhan, 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 yeah, uh, Wuhan, um, and, um, yeah, I don't know. Look, come here, we could spend all night talking about that, yeah. right? We, me and you ain't gonna figure this shit. Oh no, 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 no! But I would definitely say on on on, on two things. Like I was saying there, the uh, it's a blessing and a curse having the pub closed because uh, we're closed regardless of whether we could open or not. Yeah. Uh, and I would hate to have the pub open and not have it to its capacity because, like, we're sort of a very very small music um, venue for stuff, and like we're piled in on top of each other inside. Oh yeah, of course. And, oh, That's what makes it great. It makes it great. It makes it fantastic. Yeah. It makes, like all the bands love coming down to us because it's very intimate. Um, now it's batshit crazy as well, but oh, yeah. um, it makes that's it what really makes it so great. great. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know whether we ever get that back again, man. Um, they say the White House have a test that can test you in twenty minutes, so they get your results back in twenty minutes. Maybe I don't know. Like you see all these things with little cameras and the guns and stuff like that, and check your temperature coming in. I don't know, man. Look, apparently in the NBA they. They like test you when you're going into a place and you get your results back straight away. Because you know they're all in like a bubble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd say I'd say at higher levels they have um at high levels they probably have quick testing. You yeah. Know what I mean? They have to. They have to. But like yeah. how much money is that really? You know what I mean? They're not gonna pass yeah. it down to the everyday man like me or you, you know? No. No, no, not at all. No. Like I've got the tests when I came back from London. Yeah. And it took me two days to come back. Which isn't so bad. That's okay. You can deal with that. You can. It is. That, like you know, that's not too bad. But like they'd want it in twenty four hours. Realistically, like two yeah. two days isn't bad, but you'd want twenty four hours. I think it, you need twenty four hours if you're under time pressure. Yeah, 
if you're coming straight into the country, there's no points. Like, uh, yeah, look, we can go into this and into this and into we this. Can. <laughs> it's like politics. You could talk for it all day. Uh, no, <laughs> about politics, brother. No, brother. we're not going to go there. <laughs> serious side uh, side lane here. Now we can go into all different types of things, but let's yeah. keep it lighthearted as possible. I think what the government need to do is get off the fucking ass. Yeah. Um, and I've said this even when the pub went into when we were closed uh, in the pubs and the wet pubs are closed. Um, I think the government needs leadership. Um, yeah. I think the country needs leadership. Um, and I always said, I said, even the captain of the Titanic had the balls to go down with the ship. And we seem to have people just jumping off the boat left, right and center. Yeah, completely. For it. Um, I would much rather a politician jump up and say, right, lads, let's try this. And if it doesn't work, then. At least he's getting the initiative to go out and try it. Yeah. Whereas if you're like the other politicians just stepping back and you're releasing half. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, excuse the pun, but get the balls. Whether you be female, <laughs> fucking balls to go do something. Yeah. Like, there's more. There's like I always say, there's more money lost from an indecision than a wrong decision. Oh, completely. There, like, for decision, instance, you know pushing the phases forward. That's if it, we yeah. stuck to the phases, we wouldn't have a bad. Yep. Uh, yeah. Corona County thing. No, but then you've got the meat factories and all that too. Nah, nah, pff, nah. We're talking about music. We're talking about photography. We're not talking about <laughs> politics. Ah, we'll we'll go from there. We'll move on. We'll move on. We'll yeah. move on. So what next year? Do you have anything booked for next year? Hopefully, or is it going to be um, month by month? For next year, if all goes to plan, I have a few. I have one big festival booked in so far. I have a few possible. Uh, fe- no, sorry, I have one big tour planned that I'm got asked to join. That'll be across Europe, and then I have a few other ones that are in the pipeline. And then obviously festivals so like an EP. If it goes ahead again with the other ones, longitude in the you know, knock and sock in. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff planned. But if it goes ahead, that's special. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what to yeah. say. Um, they're they're trying these pod side uh, concerts, but like, you, why would you bother going to a concert? You might as well sit down at home if you have to sit down anywhere. Yeah. To do it. Like, you know, I watched. I was I'm a big fan of the darts, and I've been to the darts a couple of times up in the O2. And I saw only last, was it last week they had like these, um, these like potted areas, a bit like with the, with the concert, like they had like six to a table and okay. two meters apart. But like the darts, everyone goes absolutely bonkers. <laughs> like you don't go to the darts to watch the darts. You yep. go to the darts just to have an absolute screamer of a time, get yeah. as pissed as you can as pissed up basically and just have the absolute crack. Um, because like in, in the, when we went to see him in the tree arena, it was like a, it was like a football match, man. It was absolutely bonkers. I could tell you, I could tell you, um, hold on. We've got Aiden O'Sullivan comes in, uh, gives us a sec. We get that. I could tell you every single dart match that happens in the season. But like when I went to the, when I went to the tree arena to watch him boat nights, I hadn't a clue who was thrown. I wouldn't even have known what they scored or anything is that I, Thank you, Aiden. I know Barney's coming back. That'll be great fun when he's thrown. But uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't be going to these events if you have to sit down and not scream, shout, and throw things about. You know what I mean? No, you you're there to soak in the atmosphere. Yes. Uh, the experience. Hold on a we got Aiden coming in saying, "If EP goes ahead, would you cover Versailles? 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 V E R versatile." A versatile. That was it. How could I not read that? What's wrong on my screen? Hang on a second. Yeah, would you cover? Sorry, I had my. Mouse over. If EP goes ahead, would you cover Versailles? No, and they probably won't get put on the roster either. Because there's been a lot of racial stuff coming out about them recently. And yeah, they're just kind of, they've lost all credibility in the Irish hip hop rap scene. That was a quick for them. Yeah, look, have a look at, Google yourself after now and you'll see a lot of stuff. Like there's a lot of, they had a, they had a song released and there was a lot of, Racist slur towards women in it, and then Rap yeah, and then racial slurs and with bad things said about women. My God, yeah, for God two white boys, the nineties. But like, it's just nowadays, you know, twenty twenty. It's a very PC. you have you can't say what you want to say, and two white boys, basically the face of the Irish rap scene and hip hop scene in Ireland. And there's a lot more better artists out there. It's just kind of hard because co- other countries look at it and they're like. Eh. We don't really want to team up with this artist or even go to their country because of what they're doing. Does that make sense? You know, there's a lot to be said for making uh, making noise, but you have to kind of make the good noise nowadays. You do, and then they they finally release a statement 
but you could tell that it wasn't from them. It was from the management. Yeah. So it's even a so, apology then. On yeah. Top. Like I said, yeah. have the balls to come up and admit you're wrong, you're wrong. And exactly. Wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and that's that's for everything. That's for that's for all aspects in life, whether it be politicians or musicians or just the regular day Irish Joe that walks down the street. You know, admit you're yeah. wrong and move on. That's it. There's nothing worse than um, someone hanging on to what they believe in, even though it's wrong. I don't think yeah. it's my own person. No. Right, we're up to an hour and ten minutes. We're going to wrap this up, brother, because I know you had bigger stuff to do rather than sit down and talk shit with me all night. But uh, I really appreciate you doing this. Thanks night. for having me. It's been great. Of course, if everything goes ahead next year, we're going to get you back on. We can talk more about concerts and stuff like that, hopefully again. That was sick. Uh, and we'd have a good time. And man, I really, really appreciate you doing this. But we've got the most important part of our podcast. And it <laughs> Let's is go for it. <laughs> rapid fire time. Okay. I okay. need to change these questions because I people are getting to uh, remember what the questions are. And they're being too prepared for them, which is really starting to annoy me. So I'm going to have to uh, possibly change. Hold on a second. Now let's make this look like I'm not looking. Uh, right. So we've got 30 seconds. So we've got nearly up to an hour and 11 minutes, right? So here we go. Nicholas O'Donnell, are we ready? Phone call yes. or text message? Go. Phone call. What's your favorite movie? Interstellar. Uh, McDonald's or Burger King? McDonald's. On a scale of 1 to 10, how good of a driver are you? Uh, zero, because I don't drive currently. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a better answer than anybody. Strangest place you made a phone call or sent a text? Oh... Um, some alleyway in some foreign country. Uh, a person who you'd love to have dinner with, dead or alive? Um, alive, Wilfred. Yeah, that'd be a cool one. Uh, ketchup in the fridge or outside the fridge? Outside. Uh, live forever or have the power of invisibility? Have the power of invisibility. Do you eat soup or drink it? I eat and drink it. And uh, Nicholas, what is the one thing that annoys you the most in the world? Oh, um, I, uh, I, Quick. I don't know. Arrogance. Arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, man. That is a seriously good. That was a tough question. Uh, do you know what? Do you know what the most the only most topical question out of all of them yeah. is? Is the ketchup in the fridge or outside? <laughs> I've had to stop timers because people have to think about that one. The rest what? of them are so easy to do. Yeah. The rest of them are like, and then they go into Chef or Heinz or whichever. Um, <sighs> yeah. It's a, it's a very topical one altogether. And it was the most random one I found on yeah. rapid fire questions. And it's the most one that gets the most, uh, how can you put ketchup inside the fridge? How can you keep ketchup outside the fridge? Oh, man. People will argue over everything. That's it. My brother, thank you so much for doing this. I thank really you, Terence. Thank you doing it. Uh, thank you so much. We will talk again real, real soon. All right, my man? Mind yourself. 100%. Looking forward to it, man. Right, everybody. That was Nicholas O'Donnell. Uh, one of the good, good, good guys. As I said, his family was local lad. We always like to give a shout out to everybody local here at Bantry. Thank you once again for everybody tuning our way. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back next week. We have loads of guests all the time. If you're tuning in on Facebook, hello, how are you? Don't forget, head over to our YouTube station. Uh, you can follow us there. We have loads of uh, previous podcasts from all the summer we've done. We've got some great ones, uh, some really good messages in them. Uh, and uh, yeah, hit us a subscribe as well. Please, please, please hit the subscribe, the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it if you could. Uh, over on YouTube, you can hit us on the cozy, or not the cozy, Cabin Fever podcast page, or you can go hashtag Cabin Fever PCAST. And remember, guys, tell someone you love them. Uh, thanks for tuning our way, and we'll catch you again real soon. Good night, and God bless, guys. See you. Uh, frozen in this moment, the last, and I know it. Think about the winners with hands with the coders. Think about hand, I see you still growing. Think about the world that like we didn't even notice. We became.